Well, hi there, I'm Noah Bradley, and this is Handmade House TV. On this week's episode, we're gonna talk about fascia. What is it and how to install it? So stay tuned. Well, all right, today we're gonna to talk about fascia. And one of the great things about fascia is the fact that it's almost a universal name for a particular aspect, a particular part of a home that we build. Uh, there's a lot of terms that uh, tend to be geographic around the world and everybody's got their own particular uh, terminology for it and it often uh, confuses me as far as trying to relate to all you guys that are worldwide uh, with the terms that we use here locally for the building parts, but it seems like fascia is almost universal. That's spelled F-A-S-C-I-A and uh, it is any kind of board that is used around the edges of our roof in order to protect our home and to serve as a definitive edge of that roof. And uh, a, a lot of times with, uh, with log cabin work in particular, people will, uh, they'll, they'll bypass the idea of any, using any fascia, particularly on the, on the front or the back side of the house where the rafter tails are exposed, that there is something country-ish, uh, rustic about using, about leaving the uh, rafter tails exposed. Uh, but the, the, the negative side of that is, uh, is that, first of all, I think that fascia uh, adds a little bit of refinement to a rustic home. It, it brings a, a log cabin up to a, a richer, higher level aesthetically to look at. Uh, and uh, whereas uh, uh, if you keep going down the path of making your home look rustic, uh, before long it looks, uh, it looks a little bit too too primitive. Uh, so that's that's one aspect, but the main reason why we want to apply fascia to our log home whenever possible, or any home, uh, is that uh, the ends of our rafter tails are exposed to the weather. The ends of any piece of wood is, is, is wood is best described as a bundle of straws and that the in, the end grain of any wood is prone to absorbing water deep into it uh, through whenever the ends are exposed. So if you've got the rafter tails here and a large amount of water that's constantly flowing down on them, uh, the rafter tails are going to be constantly absorbing that water and holding that water. And it's just a matter of time basically before the rafter tails uh, rot out. And then you can come in and you can you know, cut the rafter tails off and you can have a carpenter sort of scab something back on there in order to do uh, fascia or to try to restore that primitive look that you had going on, uh, but likely you're going to end up eventually doing fascia, so you might as well do fascia while you can. So whenever I do fascia, uh, in, like in this particular situation, uh, when I was putting the roof sheathing down, I left it uh, prolonged, I left it longer than what the structure was. Uh, it came out and that created my, my uh, eaves on the ends on this little log shaft that I'm building. In order to create that visual appeal at the end of all those exposed uh, roof sheathing sticking out there, basically you're creating a fascia effect a gable fascia that looks like a real rafter out there so you're you're basically you're cutting your fascia exactly as you cut your rafters other than you're not cutting that little bird's mouth uh, feature into it and then you're nailing through your fascia into the end grain of your sheathing that you put up previous than that. Now, the, the nailing power, the nailing holding power whenever you're driving a board, a nail into the end grain is not very strong. So it's a good idea to put quite a few nails in it. Uh, you want to definitely put some kind of nail that is rot resistant or rust resistant. Uh, stainless steel would be best, but galvanized uh, works in there close to second. It's not a bad idea to do a little bit of a ribbed nail or a little bit of a spiral nail if you got it, which tends to hold better in the end grain. And when I'm, a, when I'm choosing the wood that I want to go uh, for fascia, I tend to, uh, uh, if it's going to be painted, I want a I fascia that's, uh, that holds paint really well. But if 
it's going to be left natural like it is here on this particular structure uh, I want it to blend in with the with the logs themselves and uh, extremely important I want it to be a durable wood uh, so I wouldn't use a wood such as pine or poplar uh, for my fascia material. I'd use something a little bit more rot resistant than that. And so on this particular uh, um, little shed here that I used a, a lot of oak, a lot of white oak, and uh, also I used a little bit of walnut as well, which is uh, were scraps from the milling of the logs themselves. And uh, which is known for a, a species that's uh, also uh, relatively rot resistant uh, when it comes to um, exposure to the weather. So uh, I always do my, uh, my uh, gable ends fascias first of all, and then I do uh, the fascia along the, uh, along the, the, uh, the fronts and backs of the log cabin. And uh, typically, uh, another aspect that, that uh, you would do in a more refined home if you're building a really nice cabin, uh, but a, this is a log shed for me, but uh, would be the soffit. And the soffit board is what you would normally see uh, that's flat nailed to the bottom of the rafters and the fascia would cover it over and you would create a boxed in eave more or less. Uh, but here I'm going for a little bit of a rustic look. I'm going for a blend between that rafter tail look and uh, and the more refined one that we typically see on every new home is basically a boxed in fascia and soffit combination. So I am going to go ahead and apply the fascia so that the height is correct so that it doesn't interfere with my uh, roof work that goes on my finished roof work, my slate that's going to go up top. And uh, I want to leave an overhang down at the bottom so that there's plenty of a drip edge so water can't come around and, and go back up and hit the uh, rafter. And in fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and make it, say, an, an inch, a full inch below this rafter tail. And uh, that would allow it in case at some time in the future, perhaps I might want to, uh, to put up a soffit board that, that would, uh, the fascia would then cover the edge of the, uh, the soffit that came out. Anyway, I thank you for joining me today here on uh, Handmade House TV. Look forward to seeing you guys next week. This cabin is coming along. It's getting time to start putting those slate on top of the roof. Uh, we're getting near uh, a good dry cabin here. Anyway, you take care. Thank you for sharing here. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. And thank you for coming back every week and putting up with this old man. Until next week, you guys take care. We'll talk to you later. Bye now.